Callum, thank you very much for, for your time this morning. Obviously, you're within sport and physical activity, so can we talk about your journey a little bit? I know you're 28 now. You have your own yeah. coaching company, which is which is fantastic. Let's go back to the beginning. Where did your career in sport and physical activity begin? Um, so I think I've always had like a passion for sport. I think that was probably the main thing. I think that came through um, school and doing a lot of different sports and having looked up to my PE teachers quite a lot and um I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to do loads of different sports and be average at quite a few. And then um I started to do um actually did a sports leadership course at school. So I did like a level two community sports leadership, I think yeah, it yeah. was in like year eleven. Then I did another one in six home when I did uh, PE there. Um and that sort of got us into it and then I started to volunteer and help out at my local rugby club and cricket club as well okay um more so started to help out with different age groups along there um and that's um sort of kick-started my sort of passion to go into coaching really so did you, did you stay on sixth form at school did you go to college uh, i went to, i did go to sixth form okay yeah and did you study pe there i did yeah um, I kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do, to be honest. A bit like most people probably at that age, but I, I knew I had my passion for sport. I then, um, got my A levels and then actually qualified to go to university. I went, didn't like it, and dropped out. Okay. Um, within a short space of time, to be fair. Right. Okay. Um, what course were you going to study at university? Sports coaching. Okay. So that was very much the aim, uh, very much from sort of year 11. Where does that, that, yeah. that dream kind of begun? Yeah, it did, yeah. I, I mean, I kind of didn't know what else, what other routes there, there were, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um. So I just kind of followed what everyone else was doing and said, right, I'll go to the university and see what happens. And then didn't really sort of take to it, to be fair. Right. And so when you decide to drop out of university at sort of, 18, 19 year old, whatever yeah, it might yeah. be. What what was the kind of thought process from there? Kind of where where does the 18 year old Callum go from from that point on? Uh I didn't know myself to be fair. I just knew I wanted to to get into sports. So then from there I um what did I do? Uh did what other people did as well. I went travelling for a little okay. while. Um but then after that came back and just knew I wanted a job in sport. And then um, from that, I knew I needed a qualification to start with. And I had a good sort of mentor at the cricket club and he suggested, right, well, well you should do your level two and that can start you off. And um, was that in cricket? So I, that was in cricket. Okay. That was my first qualification, yeah. And I did my level two in cricket. And that from there, I managed to get some part-time work with the um, Nathumberland Cricket Board. So, like, delivering in schools um, and then do some of that county pathway stuff as well, which I really enjoyed. And then hey. um, I got an opportunity to work with the rugby tots as well. So I started to do some preschool rugby. Okay. Um, so through that, and then I sort of went, went from there, really. So you've done your NGB, um, so the National Government Body Qualification in Cricket. Yeah. Rugby, how how did rugby come along, you know, talking about being within cricket and then all of a sudden doing rugby yeah, tots? How did that yeah, so, so, so um, I'd always played rugby. Right. I'd done a lot of volunteering at um, the rugby club. I did, um, I think it was a level one. Okay qualification at the time for for rugby in in between that period yeah. um which with rug with the rugby toss I was just sort of like an assistant to start yeah. with um and then I sort of as I went on I could start a lead session with with a level two B in there as well um, uh, you know we talk about the volunteer voluntary hours mm -hmm. that's obviously that's projected you to in a good light to the staff at the rugby club and it, it's a it's yeah. 
shown them that you, you, you're you passionate, you're dedicated, and then it's led to work. You know, I'm kind of putting words in your mouth a little bit, but what what did you get from volunteering on, on these different programmes, you know, with the, oh, with the cricket, with the rugby? It, it's been massive. It's been a massive thing. I just... So stripping it down again from year 10 when we had to do like work experience, I went and did uh, two weeks in a in a high school with a P section. So that sort of kick-started it again, doing multi multi sports and sort of learning off the off the P teachers. And then um yeah, sort of sort of volunteering in the critic club and the rugby club, and that's just really helped help me learn and on the different like background surroundings and really? help me get a step ahead of other people. I always thought, well, I haven't got a qualification at the moment, but what can I do to help me be better than other people? And yeah. that was just put put hours in and volunteer and, and learn and try and yeah, learn off yeah. other people that have done it really. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah. yeah good. So you, Delivering cricket, you're starting to you know gain an NGB level one in in rugby and, and deliver yeah. some of these rugby sessions and, and assisting the yeah. full time level team coach. When did this translate into okay? I'm doing some hours here. I'm doing some hours there. Where was the next step in your journey to progress into full time employment? Yeah, so I was sort of at that point where right, how am I going to get into a, a full time role in sport here without obviously my university degree or anything and then an apprenticeship um popped up and that was um in Annick so with Active Northumberland um and that was through Time Met College and that was a level three in a diploma in sports development so what I liked about it it was very much on the job so it was Monday to Friday um, do my college work in and around it so I wasn't like I didn't actually have to go into the college that much I just I did it on the job and from the mm-hmm. office and stuff and then but I was hands on and going around with the, the other lead coach in sports development at, at Annick and we just went into schools around the, the area where we covered loads and loads of different things and I, it was the, the best thing that I've done really um, wow. so rather than without being funny, without trying to jump into a full-time job on a bigger salary, I had to take that sort of hit, as it were, yeah. um, with the apprenticeship wage. But that just then, I'd, so I did that for a year and that set me up massively. Right. Got qualified in that. Did Meanwhile, during my apprenticeship, I did um, a level two in rugby union. Okay. Um, so I did that along with other CPD and did like a dodgeball activator course and a few other bits and pieces but we I managed to see a lot of like primary school, secondary schools, disability work, community work, went into care homes, we did preschool stuff, you know, like a really broad range. Yeah. So So you've got a, a massive so, kind of diverse range of people to work with, building up those skills and Yeah. You talk you talked about how, how good the apprenticeship was for you there. And I think it's very easy to to highlight the amazing things that you do in the different groups that you work with. What were some of the tasks that maybe a young person looking to get into an apprenticeship might think, oh, I don't want to do the job because of that. However, it's just part of the role. Is there anything where you used to think, oh, I really don't enjoy that that element of what I'm doing? And it might be, it might be cleaning kit, it could be anything, you know, packing stuff away, but but actually, yeah, those skills and, and just those tasks that you had to do bettered you in the role anyway yeah de- definitely I mean you've got to obviously assist sessions and I think it's I've sort of known and like from being an assistant and working with a lead coach I think it can be really really useful yeah. I think yeah you've got to do the stuff where you're setting up you're packing away cones you're having to get all the kit sorted and things like that um comes with a territory really yeah i might not have enjoyed that bit that much but i sort of try to be a really useful assistant and i think um 
whether that be you could just stand to the side and then at the end pack away the cones or you could see a kid that was struggling maybe take them off to the side and say look oh and I actually thrived off that and the parents seem to, to like that where certain kids might not want to get involved in the session but luckily I was there to go and actually help that and I, and think, I think it's amazing to highlight the importance of of those people who do assist the, the lead coach oh, oh, massively massively and I think it's obviously down to sometimes the lead coach as well being open to ideas and yeah. open to the assistant helping and I think I, I did have a good sort of mentor within that so that was um that yeah. was that was good and helpful no, yeah great. So apprenticeship's finished and you and you you work with an active Northumberland. I obviously know yeah. there's a next step. So what was the next step in your journey from that? Yeah, so qualified. Um unfortunately the there wasn't a role in sort of sports development in active Northumberland after that. Um so then I continued for a few months and I did some like casual work where I worked in schools through Active Northumberland through um the cricket the Thumbling cricket board as well. So I was getting hours doing that. And then also um some stuff with the RFU. Okay. So through my level two, through meeting people on that course. And they sort of saw me coach and they said, Oh, you could actually be a good addition to us and helping out in schools and things like that. So I started to do a few hours with them as well. Um and then through that also um I started to coach Newcastle University women's rugby team. Wow. How did that opportunity present itself? So through um, people that work within the RFU, the guy that was um, coaching them yeah. alongside his work with the RFU and there was a sort of vacancy came up and he'd seen me coach and things and thought you'd be a good addition. So I, wow. I started, to do, started to do that as well, which... Again, it was just another string to the bow, and like, yeah, of course, a bit different than what I've done before, but really enjoyable and really, wow. really good. And then, and then it just sort of all dominoed from there, really. And a, a job came up at the Newcastle Falcons, um, as a development officer, a community development officer. So, put my name in the hat for that, and went and interviewed, and managed to get the role there. Wow. Um, That's fantastic. So great. So I, I did I did that and I was keeping the uni stuff alongside that as well. So brilliant. It was so, good and so I was just gonna yeah, say again, oh, all of a sudden going from having casual hours and, and maybe kind yeah. of trying to pave your way within the sport and physical activity sector to then having a role with you know the, yeah. the main rugby team within the city and, and, and surrounding mm -hmm. areas of, of the north of the time. Also having casual hours as well, although soon you're in a really fantastic position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you navigate that? Because as a young person who all of a sudden went from having casual hours, maybe just making ends meet and doing enough that all of a sudden yeah. wow, all these hours to work. How did you navigate that yeah. situation? Moved out. <laughs> Got a flat. <laughs> yeah. And that's so good to highlight. You know, I think yeah, especially when we're thinking about the young people who are aspiring to become sports coaches, actually through volunteering, through hard work, through making sure you know you you dedicate, you're passionate, regardless of what your role is within that setting. It, yeah, you know it's it's afforded you that opportunity to to get on the mortgage ladder, well, property ladder, mortgages. That yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, how what was that feeling then, knowing that you had done all this work and got to a point now where actually I've saved up money and I can I can buy my own house yeah i mean massive to be honest with you it was as i said before with the with the apprenticeship and when i was before the apprenticeship when i was a, applying for that i thought is this a, a bit of a hit i'm going to be on not very much a week you know but obviously i was still living at home at the time so i thought what well, what should i do and stuff and then i just thought right you know what i want to try and broaden my like horizons a bit and just get some more experience and then yeah ended up getting a full-time role and it was it was brilliant yeah thoroughly enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed my time there and um yeah when it, it comes to qualifications and apprenticeships and it, it, you know from what you're saying is it's safe safe to say and if, if we are promoting this to young people anyone who's thinking about transitioning to our sector that though 
that investment and it's very much an investment in yourself you know yeah. you're saying you did a level three apprenticeship and yes you had maybe had to go into an apprenticeship wage for the first year wherever it may be yeah, yeah. but it was well worth that investment in yourself because to where you are now 100 percent, definitely okay. perfect uh, yeah and and obviously alongside my um like voluntary hours as well you know so yeah. just broadened up my cv effectively and then yeah sort of took it from there and did did many different roles throughout my role with um the filming so yeah. and at what good. point because as a 20 year old 28 year old young young guy set up your own business is a massive step like mm -hmm. you know i think hats off to anybody who even attempts it to work for themselves yeah. i think it's a phenomenal thing to do and and really it's really brave it's it's obviously testament to you as a person at what yeah. point when you were working for the falcons um what was that something that you thought this is now a really viable option i you know i want that freedom and flexibility to work for myself i've sort of always had it in in the back of my mind i think a little bit and i've never i never cut ties as it were so i've always had really good relationship with people within sport and i think those people have really helped me along the way and that's then helped me lead to what what i'm doing now really but being brutally honest the the, the thing that happened was was covid hit right uh, with 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 the falcon so um that sort of changed my role a bit um end up leaving and going into a different role during during COVID, just right. the way things worked out. And that wasn't within sport. Um, but I was lucky enough to have a job when I didn't think, I didn't know what was going on. I'm sure yeah, you were the course. same within schools. We didn't yeah. know when they would be open. We didn't know what was going on. So I just sort of led me into a different role a bit. And then I sort of always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to go in and take it on myself and felt I had the skills needed to do it and I sort of led programs before so and had my qualifications to do that as well yeah. and well of experience and contacts within it as well yeah, and I think within schools within it, yeah. yeah um yeah just within like different locations and stuff and then just thought you know what if I don't do it now I'm going to regret it so I'm going to give it a give it a go and see what happens but what was the first step then to create and CDL coaching because it's it's all very good having the idea and and maybe it's having the contacts but it's then putting that into action so kind of what were your actions that you put in place in order to get CDL coaching off the ground that's a good question um first of all Hannah my notice in my, my my old job that was obviously like the first step kind of in the thing and was that something then, that you just thought, did you have anything in place to start CDL coaching before that? Or was that your driving force? Actually, once I, my notice I, in, I then I, have to start doing this. I, I sort of, um, through the critic club and through other things, I sort of had a bit of demand to say, oh, we would love to have some camps going mm. on. There's not much going on in the area. There's okay. not much. And I sort of thought like multi-sport camps, um, different like offering different things. I knew there's a bit of a demand for it at the, the Cricket Hockey and Tennis Club. So my first step was setting my first CDL sport um action was setting up that camp in Easter, wow. April twenty twenty three. So set that up and then sent that out and that was a big thing, making my logo. Um and then just wow this is actually real now I've, yeah. I've put it out on social media I had a bit of help with that um and then sort of got suddenly loads of people started to book on i was just like oh this is amazing this is real um and then yeah contacted schools to say would you have me in to do your pe primary pe and then they were like yeah we'd love to have you in so that's what kick started really wow that is so. phenomenal absolutely brilliant and Obviously, I work for the Chartered Institute for the Management of Sport and Physical yeah. Activity, or SimSpa for short. Yeah. As a 28-year-old and being within the sector, when did you hear about SimSpa and what made you 
realize that actually the license to practice and, and being regulated through Simsport was the right thing for you to do for your organization? Yeah, so sort of just looking at um, when I was setting up of what I can get that can be accredited, what what can look really good, what's a really good organization to be involved with. And I was just sort of going through, I guess it was at UK Coach and Sport England and then seeing this bar come up and I was just like, right, I need to get I need to get in on this. This is the the one I need to be involved with. And then I thought the the system worked really well. I set up to be a member. Um and then I thought it was really good how you can upload all your qualifications so you, everyone can see them if yeah, they want to, but but then I've got them as well for like it just looks I thought it looked really professional and I thought the advice and the benefits that you get through it as well can be really beneficial and um obviously end up meeting yourself and the things that that can bring and hopefully help be in a bit of a network because I think sometimes it's being a coach is great and you're seeing a lot of people you're leading 30 kids and all that and seeing schools but actually it's quite lonely because you're, yeah, you're okay. on your own you're you're on your own quite a lot so I think trying to be a part of a network I think could be really like important and also like helpful and like I thought Simspar could be a bit of that as well so from that personal development oh. point of view, as you say, talking about that yeah. loneliness of being a coach, but and and sometimes where organizations go wrong or companies go wrong is they get so busy working in the business, they forget to work on the business, yeah. especially if you're a sole yeah. trader or or yeah. you know, a, a small team. Actually, where's the investment coming back into myself? Where am I, am I sharing ideas? Yeah. Am I learning from new people? And I think yeah. so. I think it's fantastic that you've seen that opportunity within Simspa as part of your membership. The fact you know, not only does it show that you, you're professionally recognised and you, you've got that licence to practice, and we recognise your qualifications yeah. through professional standards. Actually, you, you you understand there's an opportunity there to to network with other people within the sector and learn and to mm -hmm. guide and to yeah. share share best practices. So that's fantastic. What yeah. what does the future look like then for CDL coaching? What's what's the aim and the vision for it? Um, I want to try and keep progressing and keep my camps going and try and keep consistently people coming along to it and enjoying it and knowing that the product's good and not just um sort of making it wash away kind of thing. Keep that and never think I've I've got it right. I think coaches that think they've got it right should always just try and keep learning and trying to get better. Um, I want to try and develop in and get a few other qualifications. I'm doing like some SAQ stuff at the moment in like um early like movement patterns and stuff. I'm really enjoying that. So adding that to my bow, I would be keen to do other like qualifications as well. Um and just adding more things to the bow. And then obviously staying within schools. I'm doing private sessions as well, which which is good. Enjoy that. And then potentially take take someone on and um, depending on which route I go down, but maybe get a young apprentice in or someone I would love to help someone in their journey along like me learn and get into the sector and help my business effectively as well. So that's amazing. That's bit, fantastic. A bit of that really. Yeah. So amazing. Last thing from me then one piece of advice that you would give to a young person looking to get into our sector? Great question. Um, don't, probably like we've alluded to before really, but don't be afraid to go into your volunteering roles and, and what that benefit could actually bring to you. I think as a young person, obviously you want a little bit of money and stuff like that, but actually people recognise if you're going out of your way and putting some time in to a club, to a school, to this, to that, I think that can really, really benefit you and, and get ahead of the curve and always be always be open and willing to learn. I think it's important. Amazing. Callum, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.